So tell me about your game. Um, pretty good off the tee, decent off the tee. Oh. The weakest part of my game is 150 yards. Oh, okay. I just kind of spray it all over the place. Like, does it curve both ways or just start right and start left? Start right, right, left. Okay. It just kind of goes all over the place. Okay. Um, yeah, always been decent off the tee. I'm not long. Okay. Um, but you're comfortable. But I'm comfortable with okay. it. Every now and again, I surprise myself. How far it can go out, but okay. uh, as a rule, I'm, I'm okay. But okay. Uh, that 150 yard in thing is, uh, I guess, is what kills me. okay. Yeah. All right, um, let me see you hit some. What club is this one? Okay, What do you hit from 150? Seven. Okay. Six, seven. One more of that one. Okay. So you've got a good swing. You've got a good, you know, concept of impacting the ball. Like you hit the ball pretty solid. Um, I think the one piece that kind of gets you out of rhythm is your backswing gets short. And so we only have so long in order to increase the speed of our hands and our arms. Um, so if it goes back short, now when you start to speed the club up, your arm speed goes too much past the ball. So if you're accelerating your arms past impact, you're actually lagging this into impact, which makes it shorter. And so there's the thin shots. Um, and based on the depth of your divots, we don't have any big like steep shots or thick shots or big divots. So the the arms in the swing, if we take it back far enough, now we can get the, all the arm speed in and have them actually slow down to let the club release. So the release, like, you know, old school back in golf, I just first came out, they talked about the release of the swing being from here to here. And it's like a motion, right? Like a punch. You have to do something to do it. But new school kind of ideas talk about how the release of the club is simply it happens because the arm stops. Similar to the way that like, if I sat on the hood of your car, driving down the highway, I feel like I'm going 100 kilometers an hour if I'm holding on. But you hit the brakes and I release and go faster. So if we can find a way to get the arms back farther, now you can feel like the arms come down and slow down and let the club release. And that's gonna get steeper into the ground, but it's going to deliver the club with more speed more effectively. So what I'd like to kind of get the idea today is that you are feeling as though that you can take this golf club back, well, let's just say as far as you can, right? As far as you can, but I want you to feel like the arms slow down as they get down to the golf ball, that they're not speeding up all the way through. The way that we speed up through the shot is by turning and standing and finishing our swing, which you do okay. So I don't really want to get into the finish. I just think that if we have, let's call it four feet of where we have to speed the arms up and then have them slow down to accelerate that guy, that four feet has to be behind the ball. But if we take it back short, now it ends up here. So we get from here, we accelerate the four feet and I'm taking my arms and putting them past the ball, pushes out or you can save it and it pulls it in. All types of different things can happen. But our idea today I think is going to be feeling like we can get it as far back as you can go and feel like it drops onto the ball. And we don't need to accelerate the arms forward. It's going to get there because you're going to stand better. Can you try a couple of those? Cool. 
Wonderful. And I'll trade you for the 8-iron. Thank you. Where do you normally play? Uh, well played a lot. Oh, yeah? yeah? Love that course. Yeah. They're just great people. I've been fortunate to play a lot of other people playing West Mountain. Nice. That third hole at Guelph Lakes is a killer. It is. Uh, three hybrid, three hybrid. Yeah, I close my eyes and hit driver as far past the water as I can now. Yeah. Yeah, like my juniors play there and it's like four, three, nine. <laughs> right? Their phone number looks like or their score looks like an area code. So make a backswing, crank it up there as far as you can take it, and just hold it there. Let's see where you can get to. Well, that's plenty far. Okay, you're good. So let's just... I don't know if I can be able to do that every time. <laughs> okay. As long as you feel as though that it's farther than your normal, okay. that's all we're looking for for today. Good. Now, the byproduct of this is going to be maybe a little more height and a little more distance, but I'm not adding this in for distance. I'm adding this piece in so that you have time to let the club catch up to the handle again. I mean, I'll go back to what I mentioned before, like 1980 Golf Digest stuff. You know, back in the 90s, then they used to talk about, well, you need lots of shaft lean at impact, and the hands have to be ahead of the club head. So now golfers are trying to push their hands ahead too far like this, and it never releases. So I want to have the concept that the farther you can take this, the grip back, the easier it is to bring the club head back right under the handle, straight up and down. And that's what's going to give you the straightest shot. So I'm doing all of this in the name of accuracy. Okay. Now, you might hit the middle of the green. It'll just be at the back today. Right. It'll go a few yards farther. Right. Awesome. Those are really crisp, aren't they? Make it a yeah. <laughs> what, what do you normally shoot? What's your handicap? Ish. Fifteen. -ish. Okay. Good days, bad days. You know? Okay. I was gonna say I've seen you shoot seventy-six and seventy-seven. So. <laughs> it's an eight at Guelph Lakes and a sixteen at Westmount. <laughs> it just blends in. <laughs> Good. So the pieces that we're going to look for today through this is first, you're going to keep hitting it straight. I don't think that you really curve the golf ball, um, but we're going to recognize where the miss becomes. Is it a pull or is it a push? And then from there, we're going to talk about the fix to that. But there shouldn't be both, right? I mean, everyone has a two-way miss. Either you pull it to the left or curve it to the right or vice versa, push it to the right and curve it to the left. So we're going to miss it on both sides of the fairway or both sides of the green 50% of the time. And the best players in the world do. The worst players in the world on tour, where they keep the stats, miss on one side of the golf course most often, which is kind of weird because, you know, most pros are like, oh, I just want to miss it on the same side every side. Right. Geometry says that's impossible. So we just want to find out which way that you're pulling or pushing it. And the next piece is going to be isolating that and fixing that part. But for now, the farther you can bring it back with the contacts been really good. And I mean, you're hitting it out there pretty, pretty straight. So let's just keep building on that. Okay. So just based on seeing a few, I see the odd ball that starts to the left. Okay, so I think that's ball position. Okay. I think just getting the ball, maybe half a ball or a full ball back in your stance, we'll, we'll fix that. But the length of your backswing is looking great. There you go. Beautiful. Okay, so let's take a target on this one. Let's go white flag. It's about a hundred and yeah, maybe a hundred and five. Okay. 
Maybe one less club? Do you have a laser? No. Nick, do you have a laser? Where'd you go? Do you carry a laser? Uh, yeah. You can barely see um, the numbers. Okay. So how far do you think that white flag is from here? Based 115. 115. And you went over. Ball back a little more. Take that as a miss. Mm -hmm. So one thing I want to look for today is, you know, when we go out and play, when you do hit the shot that you are trying to to a certain yardage, let's see where it ends up. And how far did that go? Okay, so we've gained 12 yards or so. So, great backswing. We got some distance out of it. But that ball should be played just a little bit in front of the center. And that was, like, right off your front foot. Okay. So, if the ball is more forward, not only... For me, getting used to that more in the center. Yeah, just, like, as the club gets shorter, it's just moved back a little bit. Um, but that one was definitely too far forward. You were just in mid-backswing when I noticed it. There we go. So, the, if it's a rule of thumb. If the ball's too far back, you'll push it. If it's too far forward, you'll pull it. Uh, yellow flag. Yellow flag's going to be maybe five or six longer. Nice. A little thin and it got the right distance. Cool. Okay, one more. So, you know, 
over the years, I've tried to figure out why every type of player, from good players to average players, you know, hit five or six in a row and then they miss one out of nowhere. And a lot of guys chalk it up to just being, okay, like that was a lazy swing. Mm -hmm. But like that doesn't tell me enough, right? It's just being lazy. Well, now what do I have to do from there? So that one looked like it was a little bit quicker on your setup. So by the time that you like put your feet down and the club down, it took less time for you to hit the ball than normal. So there was something in your routine that didn't get, that didn't go through the same process as before. Now, whether that's looking at your target, whether that's thinking of your number, whether that's you feeling, okay, like I feel ready to pull the trigger, one of those things. So as you approach the golf ball, this is going to lead into the weekend for you, like part of your routine stuff. Um, try and feel as though that before you walk into the ball, you know exactly what you're doing. You know where you're going to go and you know the number you're going to hit. So by the time you're over the golf ball, you're just comfortable saying, okay, so from here, I'm just going to make my normal swing right there at that target. And here we go. Right. Rather than getting up there and kind of going through and go, okay, so I got to hit at 125 and I got to get my arms higher. Right. That's, that's the before stuff. That's over here in like your think box. And then we go over here to your play box. Um, so trying to feel like, you know, you know what you're doing so that you get over the ball. And, you know, my, he knows him as well, Sean Foley, Canadian teacher. He talks about being clear over the ball. It's all about your clarity. Do you know exactly what you're trying to do to the point that you don't have to think about it anymore? Right? Instead of having some type of train of thought going. Okay, one more to the yellow. Okay, so I've got nine iron. Let's go to the green on the right. That's playing probably 130-ish. So if this were to happen on Saturday, right, some golfers can say, wow, I hit one to the left, one to the right. I need to think about my swing and change what I'm doing here to get back on track. It's not going to change in five minutes. Mm -hmm. It's going to be more about, okay, there's my target. That's what I have to focus on. This is where I'm trying to hit it and go and just kind of go back to what, what always works rather than trying to find something mid-round. Okay. So we've got our target. You've got your number. I'm trying to get the hands higher. No, I've never hit nine iron. 30 yards in my mind. Mm -hmm. I know, but we just hit, you know, okay. pitching wedge that went 120-ish, so I think this is going to be okay. Let it happen. Take the arms up high. Good job. Yeah, that was great. 